This is about the dependent samples t-test. You will easily understand how you can calculate and interpret it and what the requirements are. So let's get started. The t-test for dependent samples tests whether the mean value of two dependent samples significantly differ from each other. In the case of dependent samples, the measured values are available in pairs. The pairs result, for example, by measurement repetitions with the same persons. Before you can calculate a t-test, of course, you must formulate your hypotheses. In the case of the dependent t-test, the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the means of the two dependent groups. And your alternative hypothesis would be there is a significant difference between the means of the two dependent groups. How does the dependent t-test work? Let's say you want to test whether a diet program developed by a celebrity really has an effect on people's weight. Your null hypothesis is the diet program has no significant effect on the body weight of the participants. You measure the weight of the test persons once before and once after the diet program. The measured values are always in pairs and that's why you have a dependent sample. We are not interested in the weight before and after but we are interested in the difference between before and after. On average, the participants lost 0.75 kilos. What about the requirements? Don't we have to check them first? That is absolutely correct. However, first I would like to explain the basics to you by using an example and then we will go into the requirements. We want to calculate the t-test, but how do we get to the t-value? In order to calculate the t-value, we first need the number of cases. We have four dependent pairs, so we have four cases. The number of degrees of freedom is the number of cases minus one, which makes three. We calculate the mean of the data minus 0.75 kilos. Next thing we need is the standard deviation. For this data, we get a standard deviation of 5.84. By using the standard deviation and the number of cases, we can now calculate the standard error of mean, which is 2.84. So, and now we can finally calculate the t-value. The t-value is the mean minus zero divided by the standard error of the mean. Now we need to check whether the amount of this calculated t-value is smaller or larger than the so-called critical t-value. We can find the critical t-value in a table. But how does this work? We have set a significance level of 5%. If we are testing an undirected hypothesis, this would mean that we split the 5% between the left and the right side. So we have 2.5 on the left and 2.5% on the right side. Therefore, in the table of critical t-values, we need to look at 97.5%. This is what we get by subtracting half the significance level from 1. So we are in this column right now. The degrees of freedom in our case are 5 minus 1, which makes 3. So we are in the table in this row. So the critical t-value is 3.182. Therefore, the critical t-value is greater than the amount of the t-value that we have calculated. If the magnitude of the calculated t-value is less than the critical t-value, the null hypothesis is maintained. Our calculated t-value was smaller than the critical t-value Therefore, based on these data, we retain the null hypothesis and assume that the diet program has no effect on body weight. So let's start with the first assumption now. As the name t-test for dependent sample suggests, the groups must be dependent. For example, a value of one group must belong to a value of the other group. 
The condition is fulfilled, for example, if the weight of one and the same person is measured before and after a diet program. Assumption two is that the variables must be metric. In the t-test for dependent samples, the difference of the two dependent values is calculated and then we calculate the mean. Of course, this only makes sense if our values have a metric scale level. The third assumption assumes that the differences of the paired values are normally distributed. And now I will explain to you how you can calculate it online with DataTab. In order to do this, just Google DataTab, click on the statistics calculator and copy your own data into this table. Then select this tab and click on the variables you want to analyze. DataTab recognizes that there are dependent samples and automatically calculates a t-test for dependent samples. Here you can read the p-value. If the p-value is smaller than your defined significance level, for example 5%, then a null hypothesis is rejected based on the available data. Furthermore, you can also check the assumptions and get an interpretation in words. The score before vacation had lower values than the score after vacation. A dependent sample test showed that this difference was not statistically significant. This results in a p-value of 0.197, which is above the established significance level of 0.05. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like, just try DataTab. It's very easy to use. Bye and see you next time.